Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about natural thyroid remedies that you can use to naturally enhance your thyroid. Again, this is going to be really important for anybody who has thyroid disease because oftentimes it's hard to get your doctor to work with you. I've done videos on the past on how to do that though and I'd recommend you check it out. But today I want to talk about things that you can do on your own that are natural, that don't require a doctor's help or anything like that so that you can improve your thyroid. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Childs. I'm an internist. I specialize in helping people treat thyroid problems and treating hormone imbalances and also weight loss. So let's get on to the topic today. And that is natural thyroid remedies. Let's make sure you guys can see this. Um, I'll talk about all of these things in detail, so don't worry we'll, when we get down to the bottom here. Um, by the way, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and uh, notification bell so that you can be notified when we have these videos, because I think you'll, you'll find these very uh, compelling if you have any sort of thyroid disease. All right, so number one, of course, in terms of natural remedies, which is what we're talking about here, is your diet. Okay, I know many of you know this, um, hopefully you know this. If you don't already, then let me be the first to tell you that your diet directly impacts your health in general, and that includes your thyroid. It is possible for you to change your diet and to enhance and increase thyroid function. Absolutely. There are several things that can happen in your body which limit your body's, your thyroid's ability to function, and if you alter that with the food that you eat, for instance, reducing the inflammation, that will necessarily increase thyroid function. So it's a really nice way to round about, uh, improve thyroid function in a natural way. Okay, so, but what kind of diet? How should you, what type of food should you be eating? What type of foods should, should you be avoiding? Well, I have videos on those, by the way, so if you haven't already, you can check out the foods to avoid. Today, I'm gonna be talking about foods that you can eat, but specifically, I wanna focus on diet, not necessarily the foods themselves. Because I think if you have that mindset where you're like, what food should I eat? Is it okay to eat rice? Is it okay to eat X, Y, Z? I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Now, the good news is there are several different types of diets, and I've included, I don't know, four or five here, that you can follow. Now, these diets all have a couple things in common, and one of those is that they include real whole foods. So as long as you're, as long as you're consuming real whole foods, you're already 50% of the way there. Yes, you're going to need to do some tweaking, like eliminating foods which may be inflammatory to your body or foods which you may, you may react to negatively and someone else might not, but that's going to take a little bit of trial and error. There are ways to test for these sort of things, but I'm not going to talk about that today. But what I do want to focus on are different types of diet, diets and dietary patterns which follow this rule. By the way, again, when I'm talking about diet, I'm not talking about reducing your calories. I'm not talking about eating crappy food, but just less crappy food. I'm talking about changing the way you think about the foods that you consume and changing your lifestyle behind you know, what drives you to eat this, these types of foods. So there are several different ty types of diets that you can use if you have thyroid disease. Again, I've listed them here, so that would include things like the autoimmune protocol or the AIP diet, diets like the Whole30 diet, um, the elimination diet is particularly good, gluten-free, dairy-free diet, and then of course the keto diet. Now each of these can be utilized in certain ways and under certain conditions. So I'll, um, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying everybody needs to do all these diets, but I'm giving you a list of diets that you can then consider using based off your situation. And you'll find, for instance, that people who have Hashimoto's tend to do better on AIP and the elimination diet versus those people who just have run-in-the-mill hypothyroidism. Whole30 is a pretty good all, you know, just in general diet. Gluten-free, dairy-free dairy -free diet tends to be good for those people who have autoimmune conditions, especially Hashimoto's. And then, of course, keto can kind of be utilized in those people who suffer from you know, inability to lose weight or weight gain and who have things like leptin resistance. So you can see that they, they these diets need to be fine-tuned and tweaked a little bit, but in general, if you use one of these, you're already 50% on the way there. And you can get the other 50% with some trial and error, right? Doing it on your own, figuring it out. And if you need to, maybe you need like a dietary coach or a health coach or a functional health coach or something like that. So that's number one, diet. Huge, huge, huge. Make sure if you're not already, you need to be doing this, okay? It doesn't matter what medications you take or doing any of these other natural therapies or remedies, you've got to be adjusting your diet. Okay, number two, vitamins and supplements. Now, of course, I'm gonna talk about these because obviously that's one way that you can, again, naturally enhance your thyroid um, through a variety of ways. But I wanna talk about some of the, a different way to sort of approach this. So most people think when they think, oh, well, if I have, I don't know, a thyroid problem, I need to take a thyroid supplement, right? That thyroid supplement's gonna support my thyroid and that's gonna be all I need. I would challenge you on that way of viewing it. In fact, I think supplements are great, but they need to be addressed to the problems that you have in your body. And so I've included some, some subcategories here that you can think about this. So for instance, treating your gut, okay, things like probiotics, um, L-glutamine, things that enhance the, the natural intestinal barrier um, inside of your gut, these can actually roundabout help your thyroid, okay? Because 20% of the, 
uh, thyroid conversion occurs in the gut. If you have gut problems, you're limiting this. And if you treat your gut, you'll necessarily, and in an indirect way, improve your thyroid. Okay. Same thing is true with your weight. The more, the more weight that you have in your body, the more sluggish your thyroid will be. So if you use weight loss specific um, supplements, and I have a video on that, by the way, I would recommend you check it out. If you can lose weight with the supplements you take, you'll necessarily increase thyroid function. And then of course, yes, you can and should consider using thyroid support supplements. So these are supplements which directly help either improve thyroid function, like production from your thyroid gland, or they enhance T4 to T3 conversion. So your thyroid is being activated. You can take those. I have many supplements which fall into this category. In fact, I have supplements in almost all these categories um, that are specific to certain conditions. You can and should use them in that way. But I want to just, you know, expand the way you're thinking about it. And then, of course, you can use specific supplements which help balance other hormones. So remember, your thyroid will drag down other th hormone, hormone systems in your body. And if you can balance those hormones, again, it will impact your thyroid in an indirect way. So that's number two, vitamins and supplements. Just change the way you think about them. Don't just jump on a thyroid support supplement and call it a day. No, that, that's a recipe for not feeling better. Instead, try and tailor it to your body and to your needs and then the problems that you're having. And I think you'll go, it'll be a lot better for you. Number three, this is a huge one and one that I can probably already tell many of you are gonna gloss over when I talk about it. And I would, that's why I would probably call it the most um, underappreciated natural therapy that probably exists for all conditions, but definitely for the thyroid as well. And that is meditation. Meditation is a great way to help you handle your stress, to reduce inflammation in your body, to help reduce depression and anxiety. It just helps change your mindset and helps get you on the right track. I can tell you personally, when I was struggling, when I first started um, uh, treating patients, uh, my practice was just growing so fast, which I was very blessed um, to be in that situation. But I was just accepting all the patients and it was just, it became a lot um, on me. And one of the things that got me through that was meditation. It really helped me to you know, categorize my thoughts and put things in order and really help people um, the way that I, I needed to. So anyway, meditation is really great. If you, if you need to know how to meditate, I have some guides, some YouTube videos that you can walk through that teach you how to do it. Cause I know I'll say meditation. And you'll think, well, what does that even mean? Well, okay. So just, if, if you fall into that category, go into the blog post, which I'll link below, which has all these, this information in more detail, and it'll show you exactly how to do that. So make sure you do that. Don't forget meditation. Okay, so we've gone through diet, we've gone through vitamins and supplements, we've gone through medication. Hopefully you can see here that all of these can be stacked on top of each other. You can do all these at once and I recommend you, you do that. Okay, number four, essential oils. Okay, so essential oils, um, in the beginning I was a little bit uh, bearish on essential oils for treating the thyroid. I, I'll, I'll admit that. However, I have come to appreciate their use. Hopefully you guys can see the ones that I'm talking about here. Um, but there are several several essential oils that you can use. Like I have a more complete list in the blog post, but I do want to go over three. We'll talk about peppermint, lavender, and lemongrass. But real quick, let me just kind of explain how they're working. They can, essential oils can work via two mechanisms. Number one, they can work just through aromatherapy, through what you smell. And the example that I would give to you to convince you that this can, is actually the case is think about a food that, uh, think about something that you smelled before and you, when you smelled it, you thought it was repulsive, right? It immediately changed your appetite. It changed your physiology, just the smell of it. And it's a defense mechanism, obviously, to not consume the food that's going to you know, make you sick potentially. But the opposite is also true. If you smell a food that is, you know, smells really good and makes you want it, you'll start salivating. You might get more hungry. These are physiologic changes just from smelling things. Okay. So that is one way that these essential oils can work. The second way is that you can actually ingest them and they can actually impact your cells in a positive way as well. So we have two mechanisms by which essential oils can really be beneficial. And I will tell you that, again, I've come around on the essential oils. I do think that they have benefit. Um, and I've personally been using them in my home. I use them with my kids and my wife uses them as well. The ones that I recommend specifically for the thyroid include peppermint, lavender, and lemongrass. So peppermint's really good because it can help improve um, exercise tolerance and help improve breathing. Lavender helps reduce cortisol, so it can help balance stress. And then lemongrass is really anti-inflammatory. So if you inflammation, remember, kills your thyroid. So if you can do anything to reduce inflammation, you can, in, you can indirectly improve thyroid function in the process. So that's number four, essential oils. But again, specific ones. If you want the full list, you can go to my web or to the blog post below. Number five is yoga. Okay, so yoga, again, everyone kind of knows. I, I, if you've ever done yoga before, you know what I'm talking about. But if you just go and do some yoga, you'll feel amazing after, okay? I, I always, you know, me and my wife will do yoga um, together. And every time we finish it, we just feel amazing. We're like, why don't we do this more often? Okay, so obviously it's helping, but the question is why or how? And there are certain poses which 
um, I think one of the ways they impact your thyroid is by improving, um, increasing flexibility and improving blood flow and changing the way that the fascia, which is kind of underneath your skin, impacts your body's ability to bring blood and nutrients into certain tissues. And so by doing this yoga, you'll be enhancing the blood flow and, and the nutrients that enter into your thyroid. So if you're taking supplements up here, then you can ensure that those supplements get to where they need to go. But also it's helping reduce stress. It's also potentially, depending on what type of yoga you do, it also can count as an exercise. And I would say for most things it does. So you can push your body to you know, exercise in that way and then also improve blood flow and ensure that the nutrients are getting to your thyroid. Now there are certain poses here that I've included which I think are better for the thyroid. So things like plow pose, cobra plow pose, and then bridge pose. So these, these are especially helpful for opening up sort of the anterior part of your body and exposing the neck and improving the blood flow in that way. But I don't think you can go wrong with pretty much any yoga poses if, if we're on that topic. But there are some that are potentially better than others. And again, I have a video if you want to go to the blog post, which goes over some of these videos and, you know, which uh, that walk you through step by step how to do these poses. So these are five things that I would recommend that you do that you can actually that you can naturally enhance your thyroid function by doing them. If you have done these before, leave a comment. I'm very interested to hear. For instance, if you are doing the diet, which diet are you using? Have you used keto? Did it help your thyroid or hurt it? Because there's a lot of people who um, actually have a negative impact on their thyroid by doing keto. So I don't always recommend it for thyroid patients. Um, but some people do experience good things. If you use supplements, which ones? Um, have you tried meditation? Which essential oils work for you, etc.? Leave your comment below. I want to hear about it. If you haven't already, be sure also to download my free thyroid resources. I have a list of eight resources that you can download completely for free, and they include all sorts of things like symptoms checker or the symptoms checklist, uh, foods to avoid if you have thyroid problems, and so on. So you can get those for free below. Um, by the way, don't forget to leave your comment, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.